All right, so we got our 12 uh, volt power supply here, courtesy of a uh, no longer operational 360 Xbox 360. So I'm gonna put this baby to use. Um, I've already basically cut off the the end of it. This is the end here that that comes out um, as the output would go out to the 360 unit and. Uh, Right here's where I, I cut it. Um, so basically what we need to do now is um, figure out what the pinout is on all of these wires coming out from our power supply. Once we get that, then we can figure out um, you know how to set it up for, for use for a 12 volt output. Now that I <clears throat> went ahead and stripped my wire down, I uh, came across two protective shields, metal shields that are uh, here uh, around the insulation of the wire. And then once you get to the core of the wire, you got basically four different sets of wires. You have your black wires, your yellow wires, your blue wire, and your red wire. And um, basically your black wires are going to be the ground wires. Your yellow wires are 12 volts. Um, DC and then your red wire is going to be I believe it's 5 volts and then the blue wire is basically like a um, kind of like a trigger wire uh, uh, um, to jump start your power um, so what we're going to first start what we're going to do at first is we're going to go ahead and um, tie our our blue wire and our red wire together so that way it makes that connection kind of like a switch and then we'll move on from there and, and tie the rest of our wires together um, and, and I'll show you how I'm going to set that up here in a second alright now that I made all my connections here I have the three sets of wires that I told you about the ground, the 12 volts and the uh, 5 volts with the jump start wire I wanted to just, uh, just show you quickly the um, soldering iron that I use I like this one because uh, my experience working with um, electronics and, and working with soldering um, through a hole and surface mount components and, and just soldering wire connections together, it's great to have adjustable um, temperature on your soldering iron instead of just the generic ones that you know that they put out where it's just um, you know one temperature. It's good to have you know have an adjustment to that because you can easily um, damage some components if you're doing some some other work that's a little more detailed um, in soldering components onto a, a circuit board but here uh, with this it it doesn't matter a whole lot because we're just basically um, coating our wires and, and, and connecting them with the the solder so any solder iron is gonna work well for that all right, so I got all my connections soldered here, and um, basically there's a few ways you can do this as far as connecting this to your test wire that you're going to be using. Um, I am going to go ahead and solder my the the other ends of my test wire to the ends of this wire here, um, and what I'm going to use to kind of seal the connection is some um, of these um, wire screws, and probably end up using some good old electrical tape to to seal it up finish the job but um you know what you can also do and what I've done in a, in a more professional setting where you're in a manufacturing situation you can use some uh, heat shrink tubing that will go over all of these wires and connections um, and you use just a heat gun or they have even the little heat torches that you can use to to shrink the tube down to the wire and it looks really nice um, definitely protects the connections um, it just costs a little extra money to get those supplies and to do it that way um, but this way that I'm going to do it today works well uh, so you know it's just a, just a more basic way of, of making these connections here but it's still safe and still durable also you're going to want a nice gauge of wire so I don't have anything um, handy basically just to, to use so uh, obviously being a jack of all trades I got 
you know, things laying around the house like this, uh, um, uh, heated blanket controller here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut the, uh, the power wire that goes to this and use this wire. It's pretty long, which will be great for, um, using and, and testing an environment for testing electronics and, and, um, just using it to, to, uh, work on things like that. So, uh, you know, you can go out and buy the supplies if you want to make it fancy with the, the, uh, heat shrink tubing, you can go out and buy some brand new wire, um, you know, for your test wire, but, uh, I'm all about recycling and, and, uh, using what I got. So we're going to move on to the next step in soldering these wires together and connecting them with the, um, with the wire nuts and, and using electrical tape to, to finish the job off. So you can see here that I went ahead and put my wire nuts on the the ends of my wire that's connect my test wire that's connecting to the power supply of the 360 uh, Xbox 360. Uh, I had to use a little bit bigger wire nuts because with the solder on the wire and the gauge of the wire, it it just ended up being larger than I thought it would be. And then this over here is the other end of my test wire, and you can see that I went ahead and labeled it. Um, one side 12 volt, one the other side is the ground. And I went ahead and checked that with my multimeter before I wired it up just to check the continuity of each side. And so the next step is uh, basically plugging this bad boy in and, and testing testing each connection at the end to see, uh, tying it up to see if I can get 12 volts out of it. There we go. So we got it connected <clears throat> basically to my multimeter down here, which you can see is reading 12 volts. And um, if you've ever seen one of these Xbox um, power supplies work, basically once the light is green, that means you have a, you, it should be delivering the 12 volt connection. Now, if you didn't have the uh, the red and the blue wire down here connected, the 5 volt with the uh, I guess the switch wire, if that wasn't connected, then you wouldn't be able to get your your green light with your 12 volts coming out of the two ends here. So there we go. We got our uh, basically we got our our uh, you know shop lab uh, tw test uh, 12 volt power supply uh, available. Now with these ends, the ends here, um, you can you know there's a, there's a few different things you can do that with those. You can put them into a terminal block. You can put some um, clamps on the ends. You can. You know, there's if you go to the electronics store, you can. There's a lot of options that you can do with that. Um, I'll probably just leave them bare like that because mostly what I'll be doing to with the ends is um, tying them into some terminal block on a device or something that I'll need to test or that I'll need to um, to use the power for. So um, that's about it. You know, hopefully. Uh, Hopefully you got all the details on this. If you have any questions, let me know. We got a 12 volt power supply converted from an old Xbox 360 power supply. Hope that gets the job done for you. We'll see you next time on another Jack of All Trades.